In a previous tutorial, I showed how you would work with XML data in JavaScript. In that tutorial, I assumed the XML data was already loaded and was provided as a string. Well, what if you need to load that file? How would you do that? In this tutorial, we'll look at loading an XML file. This same process will apply to loading any kind of file. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help to bridge the gap between novice and expert. There are times when it is necessary to load an external file so that you can work with the data. It may be a JSON file or an XML file. More and more, JSON is used as a way to format data because of how easily it can be incorporated into JavaScript. But the specific question I'm addressing with this tutorial is how to do it with XML. So I will be using that as an example. Now just remember, the process is the same. We will be using the XML HTTP request object, or XHR for short. Now I also should mention it's important to be aware that there is now a fetch API available in JavaScript, which can simplify this process of loading external files. And it also provides a more robust tool set. Even though fetch is newer and better, you still need to understand XHR because you will encounter it. It is all over the place in JavaScript code. Okay, let's take a look at what we need to do to load an XML file using the XML HTTP request object. So this, here are the steps for loading an external file. First off, you create a new request object. And that is done using the new keyword. Once you have that object created, you then specify the verb and the file path of the file you want to load. Now you do that with the open method of the object. Now the verb I'm referring to is an HTTP verb. So usually you're going to use get as the verb, but it's possible you could use post as well. And there are other verbs available, but normally when you're trying to load an external file, you're going to use get. Next, you set the request header. Now this may be optional, but in this code that we're going to take a look at, we do this. We set the request header because we're trying to load an XML file. And so I go ahead and do that. You define an event listener. Now this, I think, is the preferred method for using XHR, is you define an event listener so that once that file is available, you are notified via an event, and then you can work with the file. And then finally, once you have that event listener set up, you then send the request. And sending the request is what makes it happen. You're basically sending an HTTP request and the response from that request will be the XML file. And so you react to that response by loading that XML file and then working with it. All right, let's go through an example. So here is the XML file I'm going to be loading. This is the same XML data that I was using in the previous tutorial that I referred to. And by the way, any tutorials I refer to in this tutorial, I will provide a link to them in the description section. So here's the XML file we will be loading. So what I'm going to do is set up a function. This function will be reusable, so I can reuse it to load any XML file. Basically what I will pass into the function is a path to the file I want to load and a function that will be called once the file is loaded. That is a callback function. That's what we refer to that as. And if you're unfamiliar with callbacks, you can refer to a previous tutorial I've done on that as well. So let me begin setting up this function. Get XML file is the variable. And then we have two parameters that are coming across. One is path. That will be the path to the XML file. And then the other is callback. This is the function that we will pass in that will be called once the XML file is loaded. 
All right, now let's go ahead and define the contents of this function. First off, the, the first step, as I mentioned, is to create a new XML HTTP request object. So I'm going to store that in the request variable. We use the new keyword. And just like that, we create a new object. Now we use that object in the remaining steps. Next, we want to use the open method. And in the open method, we define the verb. Get is what you're, you're going to be using normally. And put that in uppercase. And then the path. The path is going to be passed into this function, and so I'll just use that variable for the path of the XML file that we want to load. Now I'm going to set the header of the HTTP request. And we do that with set request header, with that method of the object. And we're going to be setting the content type. That's what we're going to be establishing in the header. And that is going to be text slash XML. All right, so that's going to, that's the only thing we're going to set in the header. Now let's set up the event listener. This will fire. when the file is ready to load. And the event we want to watch for is ready state on ready state change. Now what are we going to do? Once this is ready, what are we going to do? Well, first off, we want to check a couple things. We don't want to send over bad data. So we want to check to see if the ready state is equal to four. That's one thing we want to check. And also, another good idea is to check that the request status is equal to 200. So if it's a status where it couldn't find it or something like that, we won't try to send the file. Okay, so that if statement is going to prevent us from trying to load a file that may cause problems. So once we've checked that if statement, then we can go ahead and invoke this callback function, the function that we passed in. And we're going to invoke that, and we're going to pass to it the XML file. So this is the way we do that. And then in parentheses, request.response XML. Now we have our event listener set up. The last step is simply to invoke the send method of the request object. We do that like this. Now when we're using the get verb, there's no need to pass in anything in the send method. So we can just leave that blank. And you're going to normally use the get method. All right, so our function is all set up. Now all we need to do is invoke this, tell it what file to load, and then give it a function to call once that file is loaded. So let's do that. So let's pass in for a path go.xml. That's this file here. They're in the same directory. And so that's the file pass that I, the file path that I'm passing in. And then let's pass in a function that's going to be called. And I'm going to just use an anonymous function here. I'm going to give it a variable XML for the XML file that is passed in right here. And then let's do something with that file. And right now, all I'm going to do is log to the console. Now, if you want to learn how to work with the XML data, you can refer to the previous tutorial, which I did. It shows you the process of being able to extract data from an XML file. All we're going to do here is just display the XML file so that we can verify that it has loaded. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now let me jump out and let me refresh. And then I'm going to open the console. 
And notice the error that we received. Failed to load, and then it gives us the path to that file, and then some other information. So why did we get that error? Well, let me explain this. So when you are using XML HTTP request, when you're using that API, it relies on the HTTP protocol. And so if I'm just opening the file, which is what I did here, if I'm just opening it in a browser, I'm just using a local path to open it, it doesn't have access to that HTTP protocol. And so then we get an error when we're trying to work with this object. And so what you need to do when you're using XHR is you need to place the file on a server or you need to have a local server running in order to test that the file is being loaded. Now, there are a number of ways to have a local server on running on your machine. I've used Gulp, I've used Grunt, I've used Node, I've used MAMP, and I've also used CodeKit. That's what is only available on the Mac. That's another one I've used. There are a lot of different ways to do that. So I'm not going to go into that in this tutorial, as that is a topic all of its own. But those are some possibilities for doing that. Now, I have a local server already running. I've opened that file now using that local server. Here's the file. Now let's open up the console and see what we get. It looks like I'm not getting anything yet, so we need to see what's going on here. And here's the problem. I have a capital R here. That should be lowercase r. That event was not firing. So let me go ahead and save that again. Let me go ahead and refresh. And here is our document. And we can see it's that XML file. We can see the different tags inside that XML file. So it loaded just fine. So then we could use those techniques discussed in the previous tutorial to extract data from the XML file and use that. So there's a look at the function one last time. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I look forward to any comments. To continue learning, here are some suggestions. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, click the circle link on the left to do that. I release a new tutorial each week. If you are ready to dive into full courses, you can also click the link on the right and visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. Thanks for watching.